Last time I sat down with Dr. Phil, he introduced me to a man named Mark by Skype. I know for a fact that Mark wasn't Fred. For over two years, I have been talking and texting with Fred. I've seen recent photos of Fred, so I will know Fred when I see him for the first time face to face. You, you have pictures of him in, in different shirts, and those are all your shirts, right? Yes. Well, let's bring out some items that Mark brought with him to L.A. to ensure Lois doesn't leave here with any doubts again. Um, because I, I'm, I'm trying to go to any lengths possible so this is clear. Yes. Are those the shirts? Yes, sir. See the shirts? Yes. Those are the same shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to inspect them closely? No, I see from here. They're in the pictures. He still owns the shirts. He's brought the shirts. And see, the Fred you're talking to, he doesn't ever show up in person. He can't show you the shirts. He can't talk to you because he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. He's stolen his identity. The reason he doesn't ever talk to you on FaceTime is because he can't. That'll be the worst thing a person can have happen to him. It is terrible. And the and that's the reason I'm working so hard for it to stop happening to you. It's been an emotional roller coaster for two years. Of course it has. How does it feel to you to have your identity stolen and used to <clears throat> scam somebody? That's gotta be terrible. Uh, you feel helpless, really, and <clears throat> they've been doing it for at least two years, you know, that I know of now. You know, Fred had a, has a son, right? Yes, he said he had a son in Australia. Right. And in, in fact, you have a lovely daughter, correct? Yes, sir. And she's here with you? Yeah. That, that's actually his daughter. Uh, this, is, this is Kendall, and you're, you're 23, right? I am. I just turned 23 in February. Okay. And uh, can you confirm that your dad has never been to Jamaica, Africa, not speaking no. to Lois? No, um, he rarely goes anywhere but home. So he's a homebody. Oh, yeah. What else can, can we tell you? I don't think there's much you can tell me. You know, we're always know. really, really careful to not blame victims here I, and I, I i don't want to blame you here i do want you to hold yourself responsible i, I want you to say look I, i'm responsible for what i do now i'm responsible for where i go from here because you left here before with overwhelming evidence about the general and paul and fred and you, you told me what you, I guess, thought I wanted to hear and left here and took right back up uh, talking to Fred, saying that I gave you somebody that looked like him, uh, but he didn't have a lazy eye, and your guy seemed to have a lazy eye, and I... I, I I'm really sorry that happened to you. It's... I don't know. I, I'm... I, and... and you, you disregarded what I, I said to you. And at, at some point, you have to ask yourself, why is it that I'm ignoring factual evidence? What is it about me that I, I won't listen to logic? I won't listen to factual evidence? And what do I need to do? I don't know. It's the fact that Fred is such a sweet person. I talked to him <clears throat> on the phone. That's why I fell for Fred. I you know, felt like he's, a, I don't know. I seen the pictures. I thought he was a clean cut guy, nice looking. I was wanting a Christian man in my life. These guys are pros. They, they find out what you want to hear and they feed into that. And he is clean cut looking. I mean, really. Yes, I know he is. And he's, he, he matches everything that these people find out that you're looking for. Right. 
but you've got to become discerning. You've got to become, I don't want you to become yeah. paranoid, but I want you to become discerning. And if logic tells you if in two and a half years somebody can't find their way into the same room with you, something to hell is wrong. After the taping, I was backstage with Ed and we took a photo together and I sent a copy of it to Jonathan. I said, hi honey, don't we look great together? I thought I was done with Jonathan, but unfortunately, I wasn't. Jonathan started apologizing and admitting that he lied to me. I'll never lie to you again. And I wanted to believe him. He was going to get his $10.3 million and I thought we were gonna live happily ever after. Yes, he was a liar, but I thought he loved me. I disregarded Dr. Phil's advice because I was so in love with Jonathan, I couldn't believe it was a lie. I was dumbfounded. I feel like everything that Dr. Phil told Jane went in one ear and right out the other. I was so determined for Jonathan and I to be together that I packed my bags and I went to Miami. It was business as usual with Jonathan and he continued to need money. Once I got to Miami, I sent an additional 150000 to Jonathan. There was always an excuse, a setback after a setback. I came to my senses when I looked at my bank account and I was, I was broke. It finally dawned on me that I was being scammed, that I had lost everything. No house, no savings, nothing. In total, I have calculated that I have sent him over 1300000 Dr. Phil was right. I did finally wake up. I saw the reality of it all. I feel very humiliated. I do want to thank Dr. Phil for doing his best for every attempt he made to let me see the light. I would like to say to Dr. Phil, I am so sorry that I did not listen to your advice the first time I heard it. Well, Jane, I'm glad you're back, and I, I, f I feel like I let you down. I'm That's not the case. You did everything that you were able to. I was the one who was too headstrong. I was in love, and I did not want to wake up to the fact that that wasn't a reality. Losing him was, my world was gone. Not only that, but my pocketbook. Being scammed out of $1.3 million and probably more, I just don't want to see anybody go through that. I will probably struggle for years to come over what occurred to me. You know, I hear myself saying, had I just listened to Dr. Phil, things could have been so different. What gives me comfort in all of this is if I can help one other person not go through this devastation, it will be worth it. You know, I, I asked both of y'all, is there any doubt? Do, have I got it? D do, you, do you see it? You sold your house. I did. You precious woman, am, you sold your house. I am penniless. I was retired. I have to go back to work. How long was it before you talked to him again? Oh, I talked to him right after the show. Oh, hell. <laughs> and that was the problem, because he was able to sway me. I didn't hear you until I saw it aired on TV. That second day, I fell apart. I was like, where the heck was I when you were talking to me? And I believed it on stage, but the minute we walked off, Let me tell you, he is going to call you, you're going to talk to him, and you're gonna to want to believe anything and everything he says to you because you think you love him. And you don't wanna lose that. He's not worth it because he's not real. Well, when we said 1.3 million, I thought Kendall was gonna fall out of her chair. You, what did you think when you heard that, Kendall? I mean, I've never even seen money like that, so I can't even imagine giving that much money away. Rebecca, during the taping, 
you said Jane leaned over to you and started making excuses mm -hmm. as to why Jonathan was lying. What did she say to you? You would be up here showing, and, sh and she'd lean over, yeah, but he didn't see that, whatever it was, because I was like, and I could not believe that she wasn't listening to you. She wasn't hearing you, but going through the motions of what she was supposed to say or do. Well, that's what worries me about Lois, because it's like you, you're given scientific fact and you deflect and say, well, his debit card's lost. I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's like it's, I, I don't want to yeah. talk about that because I can't explain that it's a blatant lie and a factual impossibility, which tells me, like you're saying, don't you, uh, want to hear it. I don't, don't, I don't want, want to hear to. that. Don't don't tell me that. He needs money. I need to get out of here so I can go send him some. Common sense has to come into play at some point. You need a wake up call. I can't believe she's saying this stuff. <laughs> I wish you. I wish that had I, happened to you. What, yeah, I. I wish. Where were you? Had, had I listened to him, I would have mm -hmm. had money from the house. I would have had money. I could have bought another home. Not lived as comfortably, but it's unfortunate. Some of us have to learn the hard way. I did not want to give up that opportunity of being in love. For Jane, I'd like to add an internationally recognized love coach, author, and dating expert at findaqualityman.com. She teaches women over 50 how to feel confident and empowered while dating. And joining us from Ohio is Lisa Copeland. And I want to focus on Jane for a minute because I, I think it's so important that women over 50 recognize that there is a dating life. There is something to really look forward to. What, what do you have to say to Jane? Well, when I work with women, they come from um, all ages of 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they really can find great guys. It truthfully, it takes not only dating strategies, but more importantly, you need the mindset shifts. And that's what's happened with both women is they were very lonely and these these scammers prey on that and when you have the mindset that you are an amazing amazing woman and that you have so much to offer and that you know who you want based on more than like i want a really cute guy or i want a guy that um, has a certain job or a certain religion you need a man who shares your values. That's such great advice when people are re-entering this at a different stage of their life. That's important advice. I think it's also really important to understand your ultimate goal doesn't have to be marriage at this age. It can be a companion. It can be just a guy friend that you hang out with. But the main thing is, is you really, really want to come to a place of loving you. Well, I love what you're saying about that. And I and I hope you'll talk with Jane about this. You you seem to be really ready for a lot of what Lisa has to say. So Lisa, please, please do that for us, because I think that you got a you got a great candidate right here in in Jane. She's ready and deserving. I do. Okay. And and Mike, you know, I, I really think. Yeah, Lois has been saying this has been a really roller coaster for her. And I don't know that she's ready for a relationship at this point until she finds herself. And, you know, the number one relationship in life is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I really want to support her and get her at peace with herself. And I, I want you to help her through a coach to really get herself back into the stride of her life because she's got so much to live and so much to give. Can you help support her through that? We can absolutely get you a coach at Cass Centers. Um, I'm CEO and founder, I'll be overseeing what goes on. The commitment we need from you for to begin is we have to get rid of your online relationships. So we're gonna help you get closure with the current person you're talking to and we're gonna help you refocus your life because right now your emotions are gonna be all over the place. 
So we'll hit a reset button. Lois, there's life after all of this. Mm -hmm. Got it? Two years after appearing on the show. I know that Mark wasn't Fred. Lois meets Fred face to face. Was this you right here? Yes. And a message from another catfish victim. You need a wake up call. New Dr. Phil. Check your local listings. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.